Okay, so, so uh, I'm going to talk about RSA in 10 minutes. So I or originally made this for like a 20 minute talk. Something is maybe loose here. So we'll see how far, how long time I actually will use. There's no time here, 14, 13, okay. Oh, okay. The mo oh, then there's. Okay, hello? So, I will not touch that again. Okay. Uh, okay. I think I'll just sort of start over. So, uh, I will talk about RSA in 10 minutes. I originally made this for 20 minutes, so maybe some places I will talk quickly or skip things. We'll see. Um, okay, so I just. Hi. Uh, my background is that I have a PhD in algebraic geometry, so I thought, oh, oh mathematics of RSA is easy, so let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> turns out I'm a procrastinator, so uh, it's, it's hard if you procrastinate. Uh, but I don't do academia stuff anymore. I now work as software consultant in Beck. Uh, spare time I climb, I run, and I read books, and I have math facts on Twitter in uh, Norwegian at Mathematik Fakta. Okay. So, uh, so I will talk about the mathematics of RSA encryption. I don't know anything about command line tools and uh, uh, implementations and stuff. So it will be like more more in the spirit of the original paper. So, uh, why would you want to learn about RSA? So, uh, the short answer it is used everywhere. So, for example, if you use Google Chrome and use Facebook uh, and click on this uh, padlock here. There is RSA on the screen somewhere, and there it says something about a public and private key, and so for that. And much of, if you want to learn more about the background for cryptography, uh, it, it is much of the same methods and uh, terminology used. So it is very, it, it, you can, it, it is a good start. Okay. Uh, so when RSA came, it was the first implementation of. Uh, <laughs> something I'm going to talk about in two slides. So the big problem before used to be the key exchange. Like before, that means like uh, 100 years ago uh, before. Because if you had to encrypt a message, you have to have a, have a common key with the re recipient. And you share the key and you could decrypt and encrypt with the same key. So if somebody stole the key, uh, then, then <laughs> you had lost your security. Uh, yeah, so the security was dependent on both parties sharing a common secret. Uh, so, to take a sort of trivial example, if you have the Caesar cipher, cipher, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, where the alphabets are translated, for example, here, uh, A is sent to well, X and B is sent to Y, so we have a shift to the alphabets minus three. So that's the secret key. If somebody catches a secret key, it's very easy to guess. Uh, the encryption. It's easy anyways, but it's very easy if you have 
uh, you know, minus three here. And then uh, in 1976, some people solved this problem. Uh, no, not before, so like the Germans during World War II, they, they had to have like these big books with secret keys they used to distribute them. And the French and the British uh, captured those books. Uh, anyways, so uh, in 1976, Diffie and Hellman uh, invented what is called public key cryptography, which is uh, the new thing is that instead of sharing a key, you have a public key and a private key. Uh, so if I were to send, if I'm Bob and I'm to send Alice a message, I use Alice's public key to encrypt, and she uses her own private key to decrypt. So that's basically the gist of the um, key exchange. Or uh, it's not a key exchange; it's, it's just a public key system. Uh, but in their original paper, they didn't know of any good ways to implement it. They had they just came with the ID and the terminology. So um, enter uh, Shamir Rivas and Edelman. Uh, the next year, they published a paper, a method for obtaining digital signatures and public key crypto systems, uh, which introduces RSA. It's actually a very readable paper, but very easy mathematics, so you should Google it. Um, so RSA stands for the, the last names of the uh, inventors. So um, side note, uh, actually, a few years before, uh, there were some British people uh, discovered RSA, but they did not publish it. It was published in the 90s or something. So RSA should really be RSA plus the initials of the British, but I don't remember that. Anyways, so RSA is a form of public key cryptography, um, where the private key is two large prime numbers, P and Q. So large is the essential here. And a public key is a product of those prime numbers. So uh, to recall what the prime number is, prime number is a number that cannot be divided by any other number except itself and, and one, three and five, for example. And then the public key would be six. No, 15. <laughs> uh, um, so, before I will explain kind of how to encrypt and decrypt, I will explain modulo arithmetic or detour into abstract algebra, as I call it. So uh, probably or everyone here has probably uh, written like uh, percentage sign two somewhere in your code uh, at some point, which means take modulo two. So wh what do we do kind of conceptually is to take the a circle. You can take, and then you wrap the number line around it. Uh, <laughs> so you can, if if the circle is four uh, in uh, circumference, then this number zero, four, and eight will land above each other. And same one, five, and nine. So for, so for example, you could take four plus five, which is nine, uh, but that is the same as one if, when we compute modulo four. So that's kind of how you can think of modulo arithmetic. And then if you, you can also think of it as, uh, think of it as capping the number line. Like three is the biggest number, and after that is zero again. So, or 55 is the biggest number, uh, uh, which is the same as zero. So you can do compute as usual. 50 plus 10 is usually 60, but uh, that's too big, so we say it's equal to five because it's five more than 55. Okay, so uh, that's, yeah. Uh, uh, and then we can also multiply. 30 times two is 60 as well. It's five more than 55, so you, modulo 55 is five. Okay, you, you don't have to understand all of this, it's just, uh, the, the point is you, you can do computations more, uh, with even when the number line is cut. So 42 times 38 is usually 1,596, 
but it's one more than a multiple of 55. So if you write 1,596 percentage sign, 55, you will get one back in the command line or whatever, wherever you, you do this. And you can also exponentiate. Okay. Good, so far so good. So in the next two slides, I will explain like how you take a message and encrypt it and also decrypt it. So first off, we will start with message 42, uh, which is the number. Every text rig can be a number if you use ASCII values. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is choose two large prime numbers P and Q, and an exponent, which is a number, we say it's three. And then to encrypt, you take the message and take it, take it to the eth power. If e is three, then encrypt the message is uh, m times m times m. So multiply by itself m three times. So if we choose the big numbers five and 11, uh, then we compute modulo 55, which is five times 11. And 42 times 42 times 43, two, is three modulo 55. So that is an encrypted message, three. Okay, so that is one way. So we went from 42 to three. I'm not sure how I, I am on time, but, uh, but to decrypt, you have to get from three to 42 again. Okay, so the first, thing we must do is to find D, which is called a decryption exponent. It is a number D such that this thing here is true. <laughs> I won't explain it. It is an equation. The key part is if, it's, if you know P and Q, it is easy to solve this equation. But if you don't know P and Q, it's not easy. So the message is 42. And the encrypted message is 3. So now you take the encrypted message to the D power. And now it's magic that that turns out to be M again. <laughs> I will not explain that. Uh, it follows from Euler's theorem. Euler was a mathematician some 400 years ago or something, which says this homework to see why. It's actually, uh, it's quite easy algebra, but it's uh, magic. So, so if we were to decrypt this, we have to first find this D. So it's a D such as 3D in this case, since E was 3 equals 1, modulo 40, because this. And you can check that it's 27, is the guess. So uh, just take a picture of the slide. I won't. And then, so the decryption exponent is 27. So to decrypt, you take 3 to the 27th power. And if you do that in, the, in Python or your command line or wherever you do your computations, you get 42 back, modulo 55. So, so that is how you get from a message to the encrypted message to the decrypted message. So you take the eth power, which is the encrypted exponent, often three. Nowadays it's usually much higher, but not so essential. And to decrypt, you take the dev power, which was a solution for the equation. Um, Okay, so just to recall, E and E and P and Q are public, everybody knows that, and the secret part are the prime numbers P and Q. Okay, I have one more slide. So why is this secure? You, we just play with numbers and use the computations. And so what we use to decrypt, that's the security part, is uh, we need a D, the decryption exponent, which was a solution of this equation here. Uh, to efficiently solve this, uh, you can solve it if you have like a million years or something, but uh, to efficiently solve it, you need both P and Q. Uh, but how to get P and Q from PQ the, the, when you multiply them? Uh, nobody knows. So factorization is a notoriously difficult problem, probably NP-complete. So to this day, we don't know good way to factors numbers, and that's where the security lies in RSA. Um, okay, so I had a slide about where I was 
I'm supposed to say one sentence about quantum computers and stuff, but the key part is if you have a quantum computer, maybe you can factorize faster. Um, okay, but that was it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh,